Hey everybody, it is Liz with Liz Art Finds coming to you with another haul video and I found a grail. You know how last week I said, I don't know how I'm ever going to beat the glassy baby? Well, this week I beat it and I'm going to save that to the end because it's so freaking awesome. I'm so excited and I have so many things to tell you about it, but I want to show you some other things first. Um, this week I went out a few times. Um, I did a little bit after work on Thursday and then I went out, um, I did half a day. I took half a day off of work and went out um, Friday. Um, before I go any further, I want to thank everybody for your likes and your subscribes. And I want to welcome all of our new subscribers. We have a bunch, so thank you. And um, I hope you're excited about uh, what I have to share today because there's some cool stuff. Some ass stuff as always, but some cool stuff. So let's get going. So the first um, trip that I did was on Thursday um, afternoon and I picked up three things, um, all of which are, eh, like, I mean, they're good. They're gonna make money, but they're not amazing. Um, okay, so the first piece I picked up, and this is not necessarily something you would think I would pick up. Um, this is a mask. We'll get it sideways here. Okay, and this is, I believe, Dominican Republic. I could be wrong. Um, they have a big carnival celebration and there's all kinds of parades and all kinds of things going on. When I looked this up, it came up as, uh, hang on, a Le Los Lechones, if I'm saying that right, I don't know, of Santiago mask. Um, it's specifically a kind of a pig combined with devil, I believe. Um, and they actually lead off the parade. So let's see if I can just, I wrote down a bunch of stuff from a website here. Um, so Carnival de Santiago is the second most popular carnival in the country. And this again was Dominican Republic um, website that I was looking at, I think. Um, it's the most colorful and creative among and among the liveliest in crowd participation among the carnivals. Um, and they have this, Santiago's reigning carnival characters are the Lechon, Lechones, or piglets, devils in masks that resemble the face of a pig. They aren't scary because of their tall horns, but rather have a long curved snout, right? So I've seen pictures, actually I printed out a picture to show you guys. Um, this is a picture from the internet of three people in these type of masks. And you can see that our mask basically looks just like their mask, except for the designs are a little bit different. Um, I picked this up for $3.99. I don't know what the price is gonna be. It's not huge. Um, I would say 12 to 18 on these. There isn't one exactly like this that's sold right now on eBay. So it's kind of hard to tell. And this one is not signed, but you can see the paper mache in here. It's got the hanger. And then it's got slits on both sides for ribbons and um, or however you want to affix your mask, but um, basically to put the ribbon or cloth through and then tie around your around your face. It's kind of hard with the glasses on, but anyway, you get the idea. So I picked that up. It's you know it possibly a ten dollar profit in that. Um, we'll have to see. Let me move on the next eh, thing, but it's a good profit. I picked up these bongo drums. Um, Okay, again, not something I would typically pick up, although I am really a sucker for colorful things, so that's what attracted me to these. Um, the big one has a really good sound. The little one is, it's okay. Um, it doesn't have the little bangy thing with it. Um, that's the technical term, bangy thing. Um, this is Remo Kids Performance. These sell new for night, uh, no, for $69.99, $70 um, new. Their solds are between 15 and 40, and they're, there's a really good sell-through rate on them. Um, I think anything between 25 and 35 is reasonable for this set. It's in really good condition. So again, I got that for $3.99, so I figured that was a decent pickup. And then the last thing I found at that particular place was this candlestick holder. Now, when I did a, it's glass, when I did a Google search, a quick Google search, it came up as Murano. I'm looking at it and going, there's no way this is Murano. But the solds, this was listed at $3.99 and the solds were higher than that, so I picked it up. Um, so it's kind of a lime glass. It's iridescent. It, it, 
picks up the light. So you get these like yellowish reflections. It does not glow at all. But the reason I do not think it is Murano, first of all, the bubbles, they are just random in here. There's no rhyme or reason. There's a lip of glass around here that is also uneven. I don't know if you can see that here. It's kind of wonky. Um, the actual tilt on it is a little off, so it's a little wonky. Um, in my experience, which isn't a ton, Murano pieces are more precise. They're more elegant. They're more, I don't know, like the, intentional. It's a good word, is intentional. I do not feel that this is any of those things. Now, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Um, but I also saw similar pieces like this on a um, website for someone that has like a little um, thrift shop of like a small mom and pop thrift shop. And they had this listed for $32.95. And I think that's a lot more reasonable. The ones listed at Murano or, you know, as Murano are, are looking at like, um, you know, around $100 each. And they're, they're, they're similar. I don't know if it's the same. Um, but I think $32.95 is a reasonable price on this. Um, I picked it up for $3.99, like I said. I'll probably list it around $32.95, uh, $32 something like that. And I'll probably end up taking an offer on it because I, I don't know that someone will pay that full price. But maybe if they have one or they had two and one broke, you, you just never know. All right, let's move on. Next place I went, I also picked up something, eh, and I picked it up because I didn't own any before. And this is Carnival Glass. And the value of Carnival Glass, people are saying it's coming back. It's, it's, not, it's not great. Um, this is the sunflower dish. It's got like a sunflower at the bottom. You may be able to see that. It's um, iridescent. So they called Carnival Glass Carnival Glass because they used to give it away as prizes in carnivals, like in the 50s and, and possibly 60s, um, definitely 50s. So they're all iridescent. You can tell carnival glass because it's an iridescent finish on top of on top of glass. And um, the value is minimal, at least on this piece. Um, Eight dollars, twelve dollars, something like that. Um, I picked it up for three ninety nine. It probably would sell between eight and twelve. Um, yeah, I don't really have a lot more to say on that other than it's carnival glass. I've never had a piece of carnival glass. I thought it was really pretty. I love flowers. It's a sunflower. Um, so I just figured I would pick it up to have it for a little bit, and then I will pass it on to the next person. Okay, next place I went, this is still Thursday night. I found three things, actually two things, um, but one is a set of two. Um, and I like them both. Neither of them is a huge seller again. Um, but I picked them up because I like them. So this is Iridescent. I believe the company name is Glass Eye Studio. I'm not 100%. I don't know how old it is. I don't really have a way to tell. They are still in um, production, so this may be contemporary. It may be fairly new. It's got its wick. It looks like it might have been lit once. Um, I may cut that, actually, before I sell it. Um, but it is an oil lamp. It is glass. It is, I believe, blown. And then there is the, uh, there's not a pontal on it though, so I don't know. It does have a little bit of an indent. I think it's blown. Um, and then just ground down. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. Um, iridescent Glass Eye Studio oil lamp. Uh, let me see here. I paid a dollar and 49 cents for it. The solds are 15 to 18 on this. Um, there was one that sold at 26, but it was a bit of an outlier. Everything else was in the 15 to 18 range. So I think that's reasonable. And like I said, I'll, I'll chop the wick so it's new for the next person. Um, okay, next thing I found was a pair of glasses. Now, last week I showed you guys the Polish vase, the um, Krasnow Poland vase. These glasses are by a company called LSA. They're based in uh, England. Um, but they are made in Poland. So it's that same look. Um, there's not a bubble in these. Um, 
but I, I don't know. There's just something about Polish glass that just beckons me from the shelf. Um, so these are navy blue, light, light navy, actually. It's not like the deep cobalt. Um, they still have their stickers on them that say LSA right there. The say LSA on them, LSA International. LSA is based in London. They do have distribution here in the U.S., but these particular glasses are made in Poland. Um, they're amazing. They sound like crystal. Um, just super pretty. These are considered the rum globe rum globe glasses. They sell new for $60 on the LSA website. I believe these are current. I don't believe they're very old. Um, so, you know, 30 to 45, I guess on each. So maybe 60 for the pair, maybe, maybe a little more. I don't know. There's some listed for 80, um, as a pair. Let me just see what I wrote down here. Yeah, 40 for the pair, maybe. I don't know. It's, uh, I think that would be low. Yeah, I don't really know on those. I'm going to have to just test it and see um, see what happens. But definitely, I paid $1.87 each. They're definitely worth more than $1.87 each. So I'm going to um, get those listed maybe later this week. Um, way behind on listing, as always. Okay, so the next day was Friday, and the very first place I went was The Magical Thing, but I'm gonna save that to the end. Um, it was a story where I was planning on going to Maryland, actually, I live in Virginia, planning on going up to Maryland that day. I was gonna take the full day off of work. Um, I ended up having to work in the morning because we had some emergency things come in. So I didn't leave here until one. And when I looked at my mapping software, the traffic was already insane um, over the bridge. So I made the decision to go to a local, a little further than I normally go, Goodwill. And the pull was pretty strong. It was one of those like, you need to go here. Don't go to Maryland, you need to go here. And so, you know, I've been kind of toying, do I do the traffic, do I not do the traffic? And there was just this pull to go to, um, to Virginia. And I'll show you why. I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna save it. And we're gonna just show you a couple more things first. So after I went and found my magical thing, which I will show you at the end, um, I found a um, square dish at another Goodwill. So this is actually, and the square shape is not all that relevant, this is actually Dorothy Thorpe, believe it or not, but from the 70s. Okay, you may know Dorothy Thorpe from the, the glasses that have the, the silver rim. A um, little bit of a story on Dorothy Thorpe. So she actually started, she was an artist way back in the day. She was born, I think, like around turn of the century into the, 19, into the 1900s, um, which sounds like so long ago right now, and it wasn't. Um, Anywho, she um, was married and they during the Great Depression, it really hit her hard, like she was an artist. So what she did was she went out, she and her husband went out and basically, um, I think she found a bottle somewhere um, like in the trash and it had like a jagged edge, it was broken. And so she took it to a glass factory and asked them to cut and polish the edge and they did. And then she created, um, like out of tape, she like put designs on the bottle and went back to this glass factory and asked them to kind of sandblast it out somehow. I'm not quite sure how that worked. Maybe it was a reverse design. Anyhow, she basically found glass, created design, and then this glass factory that she knew um, created her signature pieces from them. So all the pieces that were original Dorothy Thorpe back in, up until 1955, all like at the beginning, actually, during the Great Depression, it was all stuff she found and then did art on it. And then they sandblasted. So a lot of the early stuff were sandblasted and then she hand painted some of those. So if you find early Dorothy Thorpe, they will be like sandblasted pieces and they will be, some of them will be hand painted. And some of the floral work is beautiful. They say it's very realistic. And those are the early, early Dorothy Thorpe things. Um, in 1953, her husband got sick and passed away. And in 1955, she sold her company. Okay. 
nobody online seems to know who she sold it to. They, and they say that it's been transferred a few times through the years to different owners, okay? So the Dorothy Thorpe that you have in your head as, oh, that's Dorothy Thorpe with the, the band of silver around the edge, the clean band of silver, not a silver fade, but a clean band of silver around the edge of a glass. Those Dorothy Thorpe things were not designed necessarily by the Dorothy Thorpe, the person. As Dorothy Thorpe of California is the company that um, her company morphed into. And during the, like when they had the Mad Men TV show, those glasses were prominent from what I hear. Um, and again, it was Dorothy Thorpe Company, not the old original designed by Dorothy Thorpe stuff. So how do we uh, get to here? So the Dorothy Thorpe Company in California um, did a line called California Spring Flowers. I think it's called California Spring Flowers. I could be wrong. Now, my mom's gonna look at this when she watches this video and be like, that looks familiar. So mom has one of these. My aunt may have one of these. Um, I've definitely seen this around before. It's really beautiful. This one is in excellent condition. These are from the 1970s. Dorothy Thorpe Company, or Dor DTC, Dorothy Thorpe, California. Um, and again, the line is called California Spring Flowers, okay? I saw this, I loved it. It's colorful, it's floral, it's very me. I picked it up. I might keep it. I haven't decided yet. I might not keep it. If I sell it, um, let me look at the value here. So the value on the Dorothy Thorpe is only 18 to 29. Now I picked it up for 399. Um, you know, I mean, 18 to 29 is not terrible, right? And those are the sold comps. Um, there was one sold right around 30. It was round, it wasn't square. Um, it looks like the round ones are selling better than the square ones. Um, but this particular piece is in excellent condition. And later that day, I actually saw another one, um, excuse me, where the condition was not good at all. I saw it in a different place. Um, so this is painted on the on the back. You can feel it a little bit on the back. And this particular one has no, no wear, like the paint is intact all the way around. Whomever had it had really, uh, took really good care of it. Now, during that time in the 70s, the Dorothy Thorpe Company, they had stickers. So you'll see some online that still have their stickers intact. This one does not. So I know that, that this is what this is because I did see the same exact thing online with a sticker. Okay, whoops, ah. So that is um, the Dorothy Thorpe. So I picked that up there. Um, oh, and I did, you know what I didn't do today? I didn't add up what I spent total, but I can eyeball it um, in a little bit. All right, so then I went, uh, I went to two more places. Um, neither of these things are spectacular either, but you know, I pick them up because I like them. So these little salad tongs, I don't know if you remember a couple weeks ago, I had that um, Paco wood um, scraper thing, like um, kitchen scraper spatula thing. And these are salad tongs by the same company. Um, they're in excellent condition. They don't appear to have had any, if much of any use. Um, they don't sell for a ton. So new, these are only like, let me see. Um, yeah, 10 to $15 brand new, right? So these are not worth a ton. Um, I like them. I'm Again, another thing I might keep for me, I'm not sure. Um, the solds look like they're all on um, best offers, so it's really hard to tell. So I think the solds were probably $8.99 or $9.99 because um, the, the listed price was like $13.99. It was crossed off and it had best offer accepted. Um, and $12.99. So I'm assuming eight or nine dollars for the pair. Um, and I paid $2.99, no, $2.49 for those. Um, the other thing I picked up in this particular shop was a shirt, and this is a large, um, it is not a, well, you know what, it is sort of a tie-dye, right? So, but this is a brand called David Klein. And if you look up David Klein online, you will find his stuff is selling in the 20s and 30s. Um, I got this shirt for $4.99. It's gorgeous. Um, it does not seem to have any issues with it. The colors are still bright and vibrant. So, um, I don't know, 15 to 30. Um, 22 maybe is a reasonable amount on, to get on that. I'm not sure. 
Um, so five dollars into you know twenty to twenty five um, would be good. All right, then the last place I went, and then I'm going to go back and show you the best thing. Um, I picked up two things. I picked up a brass menorah, and this is a little one. It is by uh, Weinberg Company in Israel. Um, it's a little mini four inch menorah. It is brass. Um, for those of you who don't know, a menorah is a candelabra used um, during Hanukkah for uh, Jewish folk. Um, they have nine candles, so it's the eight days of Hanukkah plus the one candle that's used to light all the other candles. Um, so, I mean, it's got a little bit of wear. You can see like the candle wax um, discolored the brass a little bit. And right now I haven't tried hard to get it out, but in my initial cleaning, um, I'm still seeing a little bit of red, a little bit of blue on that. So that may affect the value a little bit. I'm gonna try again to see if I can get that cleaned off. Um, I paid $1.99 for this and the solds on it are 25. Um, people have it listed around 50, but the solds that I'm seeing are right around 25. Um, so this is a great pickup. Funny story. I, I went into this store that I hate. Um, and I mean, I hate the, the prices. So they had a brass, a uh, little brass pitcher about this, this size, <laughs> little this is um without its top they had it listed at 69 dollars. okay the prices in this place aren't insane on most things they had some good things but prices that were above retail for a lot of things um so the fact that that they missed this and i was able to get it for a dollar 99 um was pretty cool and then the last thing i picked up there was a mud mud works mug it's a little holiday mug it's a teddy bear with a Santa hat. It's applied, so it's like the mug is thrown um, on a wheel. You can see it's wheel thrown. Um, and it's got a cute little applied handle. Um, and then they apply the image. They cut out and apply the image um, before it's fired. And um, it's a little teddy bear. So this, the company is Mudworks. They're based in Pennsylvania. They are based in, I wrote down where, did I write down there? Yes, effort, a town called Effort, E-F-F-O-R-T, Effort, Pennsylvania. The company's been around for about 20 years. Um, their mugs sell new for $57. So if you go to their website, you can find their current designs, um, $57 each. I paid $2.49 for this. The solds are anywhere from 19 to 23, so about $20-ish. Um, uh, for that. So those were my pickups for the week. And now we are going to talk about the magical find. So I already told you I had kind of a calling to go to this place. I'm walking up and down the shelves. I'm seeing nothing. Um, I'm trying to go down this one aisle and there's a lady there with her cart in the middle of the aisle. And she's facing the dishes on one side. There was more stuff on the other side, but she was facing away from me. Um, her giant cart and the aisles were kind of narrow. So like there was no room to walk by her cart. Um, and she's going through the plates one by one, flipping them over, looking at what it says on the back, picking her phone and looking them up, which is great. I do similar, you know. Um, meanwhile, I look down to the right. She's on this side. I look down on this side and on the bottom shelf, closest to me, so I didn't have to go by her. I'm gonna show you this, you're gonna die. You ready for this? Are you really ready for this? Ah, like I, I want like light and fireworks to come out of this, but I haven't mastered video editing yet. Look at the condition on this, it is fantastic. There's some little flea bites around the edges. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. Some little flea bites around the edges. And the bottom has a little bit of wear, like a little bit of wear, not a lot. I mean, considering that this bowl is as old as me, um, give that away. Um, anywho, it's amazing. So this is Catherine Holm from Norway, if you're not familiar with it. So let me just show you, this is a picture of someone's Catherine Holm collection so you can get an idea 
okay? Now, they made other styles, but this lotus shape um, was their best-selling um, design. So, funny story. I saw this again on a Crazy Lamp Lady video. So Jocelyn had found one at a thrift store somewhere back along the way. I've been watching her videos for quite some time now. And um, shout out Jocelyn, thank you. Um, so I knew what this was, okay? When I saw her pick it up, when I saw it, I assumed it was glass, okay? Because she picks up a lot of glass and studio pottery. So I assumed that Catherine Holm was made of glass. So when I picked this up and I'm looking at it and I'm dinging it and I'm like, that's not glass. So I'm like, wait a minute, that's enamel. Ooh, it's enamel and metal, how cool. So I'm sitting there in the store with this in my little basket thing and I'm Googling, did Catherine Holm make enamel? Now those of y'all who know this stuff are probably laughing at me right now. Um, I didn't know. I assumed it was glass. This is clearly not glass. So I thought it might be a fake, right? So I'm looking it up and sure enough, it comes up, Catherine Holm, enamel, enamel wear, enamel on steel, um, you know, in Norway, yada, yada. So I'm like, okay, I guess it's legit. So I picked it up. Um, all right. So a little bit about the Lotus pattern. They're wider at the top and they narrow down. Apparently there are some fakes out there on the market where the, um, the open the wide part is lower down and it looks more symmetrical. So the, a true Catherine Holm, it's a very specific design. Once you know it and you sear it into your brain, you won't ever forget it. So that's why when I saw this sitting on the shelf, it was just like, I know what that is. I didn't know a lot about it, but I knew it was worth picking up, right? So I get home. I mean, I was so excited. And I went to three more thrift stores after that, but uh, this was the only thing that was worth picking up in that store that day, but it was well worth it. I paid $3.99 for it, okay, crazy. Um, and I started doing some research. So what I was finding on eBay, I didn't see this color. What I was finding on eBay, things were 60 to 120. So I'm thinking, okay, hey, that's amazing. I paid 3.99, 60 to 120. Um, as I was doing some research, I found there was a Facebook group on, you know, Catherine Home Collectors. So I joined because I had questions. Um, the first question was, I don't see the pink anywhere. Is this rare? Like, tell me about pink. Like, what's going on, right? Because there was one on a website that's that website that sells to like interior designers and everything's crazy expensive. And there's one listed right now, the same size. This is a nine and a half inch, is my ruler here? No, um, this is nine and a half inch bowl. So this is the second largest they make. The largest is 11, um, but there's one listed for 1350. And I'm just like, okay, I know that's, that's an inflated price, but what's, what's the real price? So I put the question out there to this group and I, as I'm waiting for them to approve my post to go up, I started searching their archives and their previous posts, you know, Lotus Bowl Pink. And I saw one lady post that she had a, a smaller one, an eight inch, and it was new. It had tags on the bottom um, and in excellent condition. And she sold it for 700 and my jaw's kind of dropping. And then I saw another one that a few years ago sold a nine and a half for 800. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what? What is this, what? So then I started, they approved my post and I started getting responses. And the response was, pink is the rarest color ever made. Notice this is pink. And it was only distributed in North America. It wasn't distributed um, in Europe. And um, a lot of the collectors are overseas. Actually, they're everywhere. This is so popular. Um, so this is a very iconic mid-century modern design. Um, and basically they're saying that I should put it up as an eBay auction and not try to figure out the price and let the market figure out the price. And I had probably four or five people in that group saying they're interested. And then I had two so far private messages 
um, with offers as well. So I think the smart move is to put it up on eBay as an auction, but what I'm going to do is let the collectors group know once I have it up. My plan is to put it up on Tuesday and run a five day auction so it ends on Sunday because that's what Jocelyn used to do and that seems to make sense because the auction then can end at a time where people are home you know, at their computers. So that's my thinking for the moment. Um, so Catherine Holm, a little bit of backstory because I jumped in really fast. Um, it's not a person. There's no person named Catherine Holm. It's Catherine Holm, all one, all one word. And it's a factory, um, they're in Norway. Um, this particular Lotus pattern, I think this factory started in the early 1900s, but the, um, and I could be getting that confused. So I might've written it down. Um, yeah, I don't, I didn't write down when it started. However, this particular, this particular, uh, pattern, this design was designed in 1962. Okay. Um, the factory closed in 1968. Some accounts, I, I saw one place that said 72, one place said, or actually two places said 68. So I'm going to just say 68. So it was produced sometime in the 60s, okay? Um, and pink, like I said, was only um, made in the U.S. Or just, sorry, distributed to North America. That was wrong, not made in the U.S. Made in Norway, distributed to the U.S. Uh, and North, uh, Canada, I guess, because um, they say North America. So... You know, again, lots of different colors, and this is not all of them. There are a lot of different blues. There's a, um, blue, there's greens. There's a two-tone blue. There's like all different colorways, um, but this is the most rare. If you ever see a Catherine Holm at a reasonable price, definitely pick it up. Um, there's all kinds of different pieces. It's not just bowls. They have um, just all kinds of different things. They have things with lids and small things and big things. They did canisters. The canisters were actually made in Japan. They were not made in Norway because they're aluminum and not steel. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there you can research on the internet. It's fascinating. My brain is just absorbing it all because I'm just so excited. So um, does this beat the glassy baby? A little bit. So, you know, it's crazy. Um, anyway, I have a lot of thoughts and it's a, a jumble of thoughts and emotions and, and all the things. Um, last week I was just walking on air because of the amazing finds I had. And I truly thought that I couldn't find anything better. And apparently the thrifting gods had other thoughts because this came into my life. Um, I'm almost scared to say, I don't know how I can beat this. Um, I think I'm probably gonna have a few weeks that are not quite as grand, um, but this is truly amazing. So anyway, thank you guys so much. I wanna welcome our new subscribers if I forgot to do that. We have a lot of new subscribers this week, so thank you. Um, I want to thank you guys for liking and commenting. Um, we had a crazy number of views on my last video. Uh, like five times my highest so far. So just thank you guys. Um, it's, it's, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm happy to share all of this crazy with you. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I will start getting caught up on my listings. Um, you know, doing the best I can with the full-time job. So uh if there's something that you've seen in any of my videos, please message me. If, if there's something that you've seen that you like and would like, um, message me because there is a good chance it hasn't gone up um, already. And I'll let you know, obviously, if it's it's already sold. Um, so that is all for today. Um, <laughs> it's like it'll be sad to see this go when it goes because it's so cool. But anyway, thank you all again for everything. I appreciate you. If you have any thoughts or tips or comments or anything I should be on the lookout for or anything, please put it in the comments below and we will see you next week for a new haul. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.